This hatch leads into a wide cabin, which is now empty, but on the ship owner's request, can be fitted with a lavatory and two berths. The forepeak is suited to store the anchor, chains and other items. This way allows the gunner to reach his post even when the interceptor is running on the sea and is better to avoid walking on the sideways of the bridge. The gunner cockpit has a carriage for the installation of a 7.62mm NATO machine gun. This is the standard weapon. Larger machine guns can be fitted. From his post, the gunner can control a 270 degree wide sector and strike the targets. The gunner area is very wide and can also be differently used for carrying up to six commandos for landing at shore in assault operation. This boat configuration, together with the cut shape of the bow, allows an easy boarding to other ships or to land. The interceptor is fitted with four lifting points, two on the bow and two on the stern, for carrying the boat out of water with a special kit so that it can be recovered to or launched from a mother ship for blue water operation. The interceptor is fitted with two transmission systems with Arneson type ASD-10 surface propellers. Here you can see the installation of the propellers at stern, with an additional system to inject air on the propellers. This is the so-called snorkel, to provide air suction over the waterline and inject it on the back of the propeller blades. You can also see the two wide size flaps housings. The flaps are used to make the boat sensitive to course corrections, while the dynamic water intake is used for water cooling of the engines. At stern, there is protection to avoid damage to surface propellers during mooring maneuvers. Here there is a grill that allows the visual checking of propellers, the engine exhaust pipes, and air outputs from the engine room.
This is the propulsion system of the 49-foot interceptor with two turbocharged diesel engines, SeaTech 800 Plus with 800 horsepower at 3,000 revs per minute. The engines are equipped with a ZF305-3 gearbox connected to surface transmission Arneson drive by cardan shafts which are protected by GRP covers to prevent contacts with the rotating parts when the men are in the engine room. This room is very wide, with the engines fixed in the centre so that an easy access around them makes the maintenance and controls simple and fast ashore and in navigation. The equipment for the Arneson drive transmission, which is served by the oleodynamic box, is located on the stern side of the propulsion system. Two oil pumps moved by the engines provide the necessary hydraulic power. The transmissions serve as helm since they can be steered and as trim. According to the state of the sea, the boat trim is set by the transmission trim position. This is a fire plug for operation on this boat or others nearby at sea. This is a 15 meter long fire hose to direct the jet of water where necessary. This is the socket to be used for powering the electrical system on board and the battery charger when the boat is moored. This is the mast for flags and signals. It can be folded when necessary during boat lifting to reduce its vertical size. This is the radar antenna, the loud hailer and the VHF radio aerial. This is an interceptor, namely a boat able to detect, chase and stop suspect boats to be checked. This boat has a four-man crew operating in the above deck cockpit. The cockpit can be armoured to be bulletproof up to 7.62mm NATO calibre. Each man has a shock-mounted chair to absorb the sea waves. Each crew member has his own role. At bow there are two driving posts, one for the pilot and the second for the navigator. These are twin posts since at any moment and for any reason the pilot and the navigator can operate changing their posts and roles. These posts have multifunction display for radar, GPS plotter and eco sounder. This post is for the engineer who keeps control of the engines with their instruments, the light and acoustic warnings to point out engine failures. Since the pilot has only the RPM counter to control the speed of the two engines, while the engineer controls the general situation of the boat. On the engineer post there are the battery breakers for the starter batteries, service batteries, emergency batteries and the device to switch from the starter batteries to the service batteries. There are also tear commands for the operation of the fire extinguishing system in the engine room and for the closing of diesel oil valves. This post is for the TLC operator, who has VHF equipment. This boat is the prototype of the 49-foot interceptor boat class. It will be completed with equipment for night vision, CCTV and others according to the customer's requests. Here you can see the remote control of the searchlight for target illumination during night operation. The searchlight is mounted in this position to prevent interference to the radar. All the chairs are mounted with shock absorbers for easy and comfortable operation for the crew. This is the main electric switchboard with magnetic and thermal protection for all the onboard equipment. <laughs> 